I mean, you have this amazing definition of art that's maybe the best definition I've ever heard. Well, I used to, it used to be my definition of culture. I used to say culture is everything you don't have to do. But culture is a very confusing word because there's the anthropological meaning of culture, meaning, you know, kinship and religion and language and all that sort of thing. And then there's the capital C version of culture, which means the stuff we call art. But what I mean is something actually in between those two. Um, I call art everything that is the sort of stylistic overlay to the things you do. So, for example, you have to wear clothes, but you don't have to wear Levi's or uh, Yves Saint Laurent or Coco Chanel. So there are a lot of elaborations that we make on top of the things we have to do. And in fact, most of our time is spent thinking about those elaborations. We spend a lot of our thinking time in the world of style. And I call all of that artistic activity. Some of it is very obviously artistic activity, you know, like there's, there's no reason for making a painting other than for it to be a painting. But it's a little bit different if you get to things like cake decoration or cardigan knitting or something like that, <laughs> where there's also a, a sort of functional layer. So the only difference, as far as I'm concerned, between fine art and, um, let's say, craft, is the amount of stylistic interest there is in the piece, the, quota, the quotient of it that's stylistic. Um, as I say, a painting doesn't exist for any other reason than to be a painting, unless you're using it to cover a hole in the wall, of course, which <laughs> you could do, but that, that, that would be a, a rare example of a functional <laughs> painting. Um, or you could encode a treasure map in it or something like that, or an insult to somebody. But generally, generally speaking, paintings don't have a job other than to be pictures, to be purely stylistic. Um, experiences. Mm. Once, once you expand the definition from painting and ballet all the way to cake decoration and, you know, hairstyles, yes. you just realize that there's a massive amount of just focus and energy and emotional investment in that layer. It's that the biggest does. business. Right. It's, it's the big business. You know, if you think of all of the things that come under that now enlarged umbrella, you know, think of um, not only the music business and the art business and the film business and the record, you know, the, all, the, all the media, um, but think also of things like cosmetics, for example. Um, a vast, huge business, which is all to do with stylistic uh, activity of some kind. Um, so there's, yes, it's a very big area. And of course, the question I am always wondering and always have been wondering about is why do we do it? Right. Why do we have so much, such an interest in this and spend so much time doing it? Because, first of all, it's universal. We don't know of a human group that as soon as they can, you know, as soon as they can just keep body and soul together, they start becoming stylistic in their behavior. And this goes right back to 50,000 years ago, you know, yeah. when people start cave painting and making um, little sculptures and so on. You think, why were they doing it? And why was anybody else interested in the fact that they were doing it? Um, because it seems that always, as far as we know, in every society, people who can do that are valued. Yeah. Um, they're, they're sometimes treasured, actually. You know, in our society, they're paid a lot of money, right. Right. Which, is, which is the only way we express value about <laughs> anything. Music has never been figurative. Yeah. It's the only art form, if you think about it, that has never had a figurative history. You know, painting, even back to cave painting, it's paintings of things. Um, uh, sculpture the same, obviously. Literature has always been about things, stories about things. But music seems to come out of nowhere and is about nothing in particular. Even though if you get classical albums, they always try to say the sound <laughs> of the babbling. Beethoven captures the sound of the babbling brook and blah, right. which is all complete bollocks and everyone knows it. It's only because records were 12 inches square and they, <laughs> they had to, they had to fill the back up with something. <laughs> they needed some words. Yeah. 